All right, folks, Mr. Hansen here. Uh, we are actually at our very last exercise in the introduction to CAD Learning Pathway. Um, and here we're going to look at uh, some nice features that let us not just create blueprints, but it be able to go back and modify our part studios, modify our sketches, the features that we use to create those 3D parts, uh, and let those changes update uh, throughout the assembly and drawing process. Uh, so I've opened up this document. Um, this is a, this looks like a CAD model for a hydraulic handbrake. Uh, it is a kind of a big document, so your Chromebook may be a little bit sluggish at first. Um, you may just have to wait for it to load before you can start uh, exploring this. Uh, but this is a you know, fairly complex design compared to what we've looked at before. Uh, there's like a little folder here. There's enclosures, handles. These are all the part studios uh, for this design, the hy hydraulic brake unit. This is the assembly. Uh, and you can see there's you know, quite a few pieces that have been assembled. Uh, and if you click the drawing, uh, that is a handbrake drawing, obviously. Uh, now, there's a little button on the left-hand side of your screen that is Sheets. Uh, Control-S will open up that menu. Uh, inside this drawing, there's actually a couple different sheets. Uh, the first sheet uh, is the hydraulic brake assembly. So that's this overview with the bill of materials we looked at. And there's call-outs identifying the individual parts. Uh, if you click on the handle, that'll load a detailed view. It uh, looks at like the side and top view of the handle portion of this design. And then there's, oops, then there's a grip sheet that'll show you uh, different uh, views of the handle portion. So um, this is the way professional technical drawings typically come. You got the you know, first sheets, the uh, overview of the assembly, and then we break it down into detailed views uh, that give us information about how to build the individual parts. Um, so there are three separate sheets there, so just, just be aware of that. Uh, now we should know how to make all those different parts. Uh, we've talked about how to you know, create the front, top, and side views. We looked at creating the assembly views and the bill of materials. Uh, here we're going to go in and actually update some of the geometry of these parts and see how that affects uh, the final drawing. So first thing we're going to go to the handle part studio. So that's all the way on the right hand side of your screen. And we're going to make some edits to this. So say you, you know, took your original blueprints, had some people manufacture them, fabricate those. Uh, you actually built the physical prototype. You tested them out and discovered, oh, some parts are too short. Some dimensions need to be updated. Something doesn't quite fit with, uh, you know, how this you know, fits in the car. Uh, so I am going to go to the main sketch which is on the front plane, we're going to make a few edits. I'd suggest you go ahead and uh, make the edits suggested in the assignment. Uh, for example, we're going to make this a little bit wider. We're going to increase the distance here. Same thing here. Uh, this is going to get a little bit bigger. We're going to change the radius of the bottom circle down here. Well, we've apparently decided that this circle altogether just needs to be deleted. So I'm going to delete that. All right, so a few quick edits to the uh, original sketch for one of the you know, main pieces of this assembly. I'm going to hit the green check mark and save that. And you'll see the 3D model should have updated itself uh, to take those changes into account. And we're also going to make a change to extrude 2. So I'm going to click extrude 2, and that looks like it's a in little end cap extrude here. Uh, we're going to change the depth on this bottom direction, the one that's going out from the end of the handle. Uh, we're going to change that to 175. So that's going to make that handle uh, cover quite a bit more of the light blue piece. All right. Uh, next thing, we're going to go to the 
hole tool here. Um, and so the hole tool in Onshape lets you uh, create holes that are designed to fit standard hardware like screws and bolts and nuts. Um, and so one way of measuring the size of a screw is using the M category categorization system. So this is M5s. It wants us to update these to M6 size screws. And so that, since it's all three screws being updated, um, that should update all three of those holes to match the standard size for an M3 screw. All right, so let's see. Things are going completely crazy. Okay, we got that. That's an M6 screw hole. All right, now we are ready to go back into our assembly, uh, and we're going to actually have to change some parts in the assembly because we changed these holes to accommodate an M6 size screw. So let me go to the hydraulic brake unit assembly. That's that first tab. Um, and just, just as a, a, a note, if you go to the insert menu, uh, there's some what's called standard content. Um, if you like are using screws or nuts or uh, you know pins in your design, uh, there are pre-existing models for those things. So you don't actually have to create a model for like a screw on your own. You can actually just insert um, the, a properly sized screw from this menu. So a good thing to keep in mind. Um, now there are a few of these M6 size screws that we need to update so let me yeah these are the three hex socket heads cap screws um, I'm going to yeah edit edit standard content instance and that'll let us change the properties of these screws I'm just going to change that from M5 to M6. So, you know, maybe we decided that a M5 a five screw was too small, wasn't strong enough for this particular part, and we needed to make that bigger. So we can we can make that change uh, pretty easy. I'm going to click update, and that should update all of those screws. There we go. Green check mark to save that, um, and you should see some minor changes made. It'd be a little bit hard to observe those changes uh, from the assembly. All right. Now we're actually going to go into the uh, blueprint drawing for this design and see what needs to be changed. Um, so let me open the handbook break drawing. Um, I want, yeah, this, this first view here. Um, now, nothing should have changed yet. Uh, in fact, you'll notice up in the top left-hand corner of your screen, uh, there's a little refresh icon. Uh, it turns a golden yellowish color uh, when there's an update that needs to be uh, propagated through our drawing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit update. Keyboard shortcuts, control Q uh, for those of you that are using uh, keyboard shortcuts. And what's going to happen, there may be, you know, as I update this, there may be some things I need to go in and fix in my different drawings. And that's pretty typical, um, if, especially if I'm deleting or adding stuff to my drawings. Uh, so let me go ahead and open up my sheets. OK, those are still updating. Let me open my handle sheet. See, yeah, OK, see if that updates. So we can see now um, things that updated in this drawing based on the changes I made to the part studio uh, should be highlighted. Now. We got a few things that it's conflicting with because we deleted like a little a hole or circle here. And uh, so these things that reference these dimensions and objects that reference that hole, um, Onshade doesn't know what to do with that. So it's a good idea to go in, click on those. Let me just go through and delete them. Oop, too much. All right. 
give that a second to update. And let's go take a look at, yeah, we need to delete that. And the dimension I had to that hole is actually going to be a different dimension. I'm going to add the dimension between the center points of these circles. And it looks like that's 46 millimeters, so that's what it should be in the assignment. Um, you can click and drag the original dimension if you want to. I should snap to a new point. Uh, let's go in and change the GNC. Yeah, let's double check the grip. Uh, so we changed the size of some of these things. So that may kind of conflict with your views a little bit. You notice, you know, some of these things are sticking off the sh uh, sheet a little bit. I mean, those are the kind of professional things we want to make sure we're keeping neat and organized. Uh, just make sure our designs maintain a high professional quality. So let me just kind of scoot things in so they're all contained within our drawing sheet. Uh, so not too much to keep track of, uh, but do be aware when you do make edits to your parts studios and change the parts. Uh, Onshape's pretty good about updating the assemblies, updating uh, the drawings, but we got to keep in mind uh, some specific things that might need to be uh, changed. And it's always a good idea when you make those changes, especially in the case where you add something or delete something, it's always a good idea to go through each of your assemblies, each of, each of your sheets, make sure there's you know nothing super crazy going wrong, make sure there's nothing off, uh, especially before you present that to a boss or manager or client or somebody who's supposed to like sign off and approve of your work. So keep it looking professional. Um, that's all we got on uh, drawings. Uh, there's a self-check to take. Uh, we should be ready to you know, start building some stuff.